Hello, uh, my name is Ivo. I'm uh, working on the backend in the tracker team, and I'm going to start with a small presentation on the tracker backend and its changes. And then I think I'm going to hand over to Joachim or Eric uh, for yeah going through the, the front end part and the things that changed there. Let me share. Yes. So this uh, is going to be fairly quick. Uh, you can interrupt me anytime. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'll try to answer your question. So we're just mainly um, looking at the tracker backend and kind of the news. So the DHS2 release of version 42 is around the corner or is still uh, a bit till it's going to be released. But um, an important thing for people using the Tracker API is if you have been using the Tracker API, uh, hopefully by now you have noticed that uh, uh, like a group of APIs has been deprecated for some time already. And that uh, in version 36, we released um, new endpoints replacing those deprecated ones. So these are out for quite some time. Um, I'm not sure, like maybe cor someone correct me, at least three years, I would say. So yeah, they have been out. Um, and so you can read about the changes in the docs more in detail. And there's also a migration guide. So if you have any custom apps or any scripts or so on that talk to the tracker APIs directly, then make sure to migrate. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to show briefly some of the changes. I mean, again, the details you can uh, look up in, in the documentation. And if there's something missing, please let us know via the community of practice um, or maybe on GitHub. Uh, and also, if you have some experience doing the migration yourself and um, there's something we can improve, then let us know so we can help the next one doing the migration. Um, I don't know if there is a is there a question. Oh, okay, no. Uh, yeah. So the main change I would say is like before you you had these different endpoints for importing. Um, you could import uh, like track entity instances and enrollments and events with this one endpoint, um, but there were also the, the separate ones for like enrollments, events, um, to import and update and delete um, any of these like entities. But now they're, they are all being replaced by this one endpoint. So if you wanna import like any of um, these objects, you would just use this one endpoint and this also allows you to update and delete and yeah, most of the functionality should remain the same. So I think the main changes are um, kind of naming. You can see that we dropped the instances. So now, yeah, our language and our code should just use like tracked entities, enrollments, events, and so on. So this is one of the changes. And then if you kind of compare the payloads that you sent us, you also see these changes, obviously, in the payload. So there are some name changes that are also documented in the docs. So on the left, you would see the deprecated uh, payload that you might yeah, <laughs> already be used to, and then the, the newer one on the other side. And yeah, these are the main changes. With export, I think it's fairly similar. So again, like instances is dropped and, and the new exporter endpoints, the get ones, um, they're just under slash API tracker. And before they were just under slash API, but there's still one endpoint per entity you want to retrieve. And yeah, there's some renamings on, on like the, the query parameters. And then obviously the, the fields in the response that you get but this is also all um, documented in, whoop, yeah, in here um, with like the, the changes in field names 
And then there's also a list of request parameters that might have yeah, been renamed or replaced. So you can read up on that. And then obviously, if you would compare like a diff between what you get when fetching um, from the deprecated and the new endpoint, you would see that there are some name changes in the fields um, that, yeah, that are documented in the docs. So uh, yeah, don't worry. That's just um, change in order, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think that is mainly it, unless, is there any question? Anything in particular that you would like to hear? Yeah, and just for the participants, if you have a question, you can type it in the chat because we have unmuting disabled um, for now. Uh, so until the end of the, the, the presentations, we'll, uh, we'll do it through chat first. But there's no questions so far. No. I don't know if you're speaking, but uh, oh, sorry, uh, Eric, are you yeah. do you want to go next? I'll go next if you're finished. Uh, you. Yep, sure. Uh, let me get the screen shared. Um... All right. Hopefully, you can see this. Uh, so, yep, yeah, I'm Joachim. I'm uh, working on the tracker front end team. Um, and I'm just going to say a few words uh, um, before Eric dives into the exciting part here. Uh, so the capture app is, um, yeah, as some of you, you may know, the old tracker capture app uh, has been coexisting with the, the new capture app for uh, quite a while now. Uh, but now we're finally at that point where we are deprecating the old one. So from version 41, you should be able to just use the new uh, new app, and there should be there should should be a way to do or accomplish the task you did in the old app in the new one. Um, so if you find anything that is missing, um, please let us know. Um, but yeah, I'll just mention a couple of things uh, before Eric. Uh, uh, dives into uh, plugins. Um, firstly, um, if you are uh, familiar with the old app, um, we got more granular deep linking now. So if you, for example, uh, or you can, for example, uh, link directly to an event in, uh, in an enrollment in a tracker program. So if I, for example, take this link, just paste it in a new tab. Um, we will open the event in uh, view event mode. But you can also, uh, there's also a way to open it in uh, edit mode. Uh, so I just use uh, the same tab, open it. Um, yeah, and then it's the, then you have the event in uh, in edit mode. And you can, for example, also, if you look at uh, this one, you can see that we are, uh, we have a working list open. Um, uh, um, where we are showing tracked entities that uh, have enrollments that are for follow-ups. Uh, so we can take this URL and Put it in a new tab, and it will open the uh, working list directly. So the working list is the follow-up here. Uh, yeah, so I think it's more granular and better than in the in the old app. If you're familiar with that one, um, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, we also got uh, uh, in the old app. You had uh, this. Verbose logging for program rules. 
And uh, this is something that uh, many people have been asking about. Um, so we re-added that uh, not, uh, yeah, a while ago. So you should uh, should still be able to um, see the program rules evaluation if that is something that you are uh, interested in. So the way you do it is that you add the variables true to the URL. So if I run this one, if I clear this one here and refresh. Uh, then you will see the uh, yeah see see the program rule evaluation in the in the console. So if you're interested in that, then we still have that. Uh, all right, that was uh, yeah that was basically what I was going to show. So I'll uh, I'll leave the floor to you, Eric, for the plugins. Yeah, great. So um, there is a lot of new and great stuff in the new version of uh, Tracker. Uh, of course, now since it's a developer uh, forum, we're only focusing on the things that we really think is relevant to you developers. And uh, and some of the things that you can mention is that, but also the thing that I'm going to go through, I think is super relevant for you as developers. And, uh, you I can briefly mention it, but it's uh, it's called plugins. And from our point, our tracker side, um, we're really focusing on on the different types of tracker plugins. So I'll go through what are the different plugins, uh, how do you configure them and set them up, uh, and also I'll I'll go through with you an instance to to show how everything of this works. And uh, I can just start by sharing my screen. Uh, and I can go into the instance here. So um, this is the new Capture app. Welcome to the Capture app. Uh, this is in, the, in an instance that I've set up myself. And this is an instance that can kind of work as like a playground and, and sandbox for you as well to test out the plugin stuff. Um, just to to explain the the basics around it is that we on the tracker team or we at dhs2 in general know that all our core apps and and all the the things that we develop is only going to take you this far it's only going to cover hopefully 90 95 99 percent of all use cases but in, but in the last cases there's always going to be things that you want to customize there's always going to be things that can be uh, very country specific that it's basically impossible for us to do generic. Everything we do needs to work in a, sorry? No, sorry. Uh, everything we do needs to work in a, in a, a facility level, both uh, here and there, and, and everything needs to be super generic. So from a, a project Samwise and, and the release of V41, we've tried to tackle this in a, in a completely different way than what we've done before. Um, we know that a lot of people have uh, forked the, the Tracker Capture app just to get some simple modifications here and there. And that is, of course, to some degree fine. But as you'll see that when the other systems in the HS2 matures, then it's really hard to keep up with all the things that is also continued developing on the Tracker Capture app. So what we hope to do in Capture and also all of the other core apps or some of the other core apps is that we're trying to build this thing called plugins. And what plugins is, is that you can still use the, our regular core apps, but we give you entry points uh, here and there where you can inject your own code and inject your own logic and functionality. And from there, you don't need to do any kind of modifications on the core app itself. And once you you upload or once you install a newer version of the core app, everything will be sort of compatible out of the box. You you wouldn't have to keep this in your own GitHub repository and and keep this up with the master version all the time. We we know that that takes a lot of resources and a lot of energy. So um, in this instance, I'll just show you quickly that. If you go to the app, uh, the app management uh, app and you go to the capture version, you can see that I've, I've installed the newest one. Uh, plugins was like secretly released uh, some while ago, 
But if you install the nearest one or use the one that's bundled with the V41 uh, um, bundle, then you should be able to use uh, plugins out of the box. So um, from the tracker point of view, we basically have two different types of plugins. And I'll, I'll show you the first one now. And uh, if I just select the program and an org unit, this is the zero on the database and click create new person, you will see the first type of plugin here. This type of plugin is what we call the form field plugin. It's, it's basically a plugin where you can inject your own code into the basic forms that we use in the capture app. Uh, and from there, you can do a lot of exciting things and all the implementation and all the logic is up to you. You decide everything. All we do is that we uh, try to define what your variables are, or we'll go a little bit into that later, but from your definition of what you need for this plugin, we'll give you everything you need to interact with the form. So if I, if I just try to, to do this, this is a very simple uh, setup of how a civil registry will look. So a civil registry is typically you would input some sort of social security number or an ID or something, and from there it would go to an external database and fetch some data. So what we can do here is just input a, a dummy, let's say it's a social security number and click search. From there, this would actually fetch some information from an external API. So this is just a random user API. Uh, if I click something else, it will fetch a completely different name and gender. And this is all configurable and all, um, uh, all this granularity is totally up to you. Uh, and this is just an example of, of how it looks like. Uh, and, and this uh, is typically how we would picture form field plugins being used. Of course, we're only, we're only developers and we don't know all these cases. So we're very excited to see what you can build of this. To show a little bit how it works under the hood, I can click the show uh, plugin details under here. And this is just basically uh, printing out all the things that is provided from the, the app itself. Uh, and you can see here that if I define that I need the metadata of first name and last name and gender, then we will try to provide this to you in the plugin itself. And from here, you can read all the metadata that Capture uses to, to print out the form and, and basically use the form. Um, so. In this setup, I've defined it to send in the first name, the last name, and also the gender. Uh, and these are the three different uh, tracked entity attributes you can see down here. You can also see that under gender, we will also send in the option set and all the options that you need to, to do any custom, custom logic and configuration. You can also see that we send in the different form values. So you can see that uh, the first name here matches the, the first name over here, if I change this to something. You can see that it also updates over here. Um, this basically is for every type of track that data or every type of attribute that you can put in. Uh, as you can probably understand, we also send in the adders and warnings. And we also try to put in if the form has been uh, attempted to save or not. If I remove something that makes the form uh, invalid, um, you would see that the save attempted is now true. We also pass in a, a couple of callbacks so you can interact with the form. And th that is what I'm doing here to, to simulate that we're fetching some data from an API. And you can basically set the value and you can set the value with some type of adder. You can set it with a warning. You can set whatever, whatever you want to do. And you can also set uh, things around the context of the enrollment itself. So you can set the enrollment date, you can set the incident date or occur that date, and you can also set coordinates and, and whatever. And I can press the set coordinates here, which is just a button that I made. And you can see that it's now it's now filled in with a with the appropriate coordinates. So I'll just start over just to to show you what the the base flow would be. We would search for a patient we would find and, uh, and configure this to fill in the form. We'll just set the occur that date. And I can click save person. And from here, you're navigated to what we call the enrollment dashboard. And, and this dashboard here is where you basically interact with an enrollment within a tracked entity. So this is the, the enrollment that this Vanindarpai person has in the child program. 
from here you can see all the different stages and everything and, and this should look and feel pretty much the same as every other capture program and also it should have some similarity to the old tracker capture um you can also see that there's some things uh that are configured here um one of the main things about this dashboard is that everything is configurable all the different widgets that you see here are configurable you can set this up as whatever way you want it basically uh that's on a program metadata level so if you're a program maintainer then you can set up how the dashboard wants to look and it will be locked for all your users basically um so you can see at the top here uh, i've written child program I've, you can see that i have two widgets on the, the left hand side there and i have a lot of different widgets on the right hand side and this is when i'll i'll show you let's see this zoom thing is in the way uh, if I switch over to the data store app over here, you can see that we have some sort of config in here. And this will be, or this is highly documented and I'll just briefly go through with you. Um, but what we can see here is that for the config for um, this program, this is the program ID of the child uh, child program. You can see that I set up a left column, a right column, and I also set up a title. So the default title, for example, would be just enrollment dashboard, but I can overwrite this and I can write child program because that's simpler for, for my program context. You can see that I also set up, for example, quick actions and stages and events. You can see over here, let's just ignore this part for, for a while. You can also see that I'm printing out track to the relationships. I'm printing out the error, the warning, the feedback, the indicator, and so on and so on. Now, this is what defines how your program looks like. If you don't have this config, everything will be fine. We'll just use the default, uh, default configuration of how things should look. But from here, you can set both. Should we display or hide certain types of widget? In what order should they be uh, be displayed? For example, you can see in the capture up here that we have this widget called uh, the person relationships here, which is the track entity relationship. And if I refresh, it's there and everything. If I go into this config and I basically just remove it from the former and I click save, you can see that it's now not displaying in the in the dashboard itself so that means if uh, a widget is not relevant for you or your program context you can just remove it and you don't need to to display it we can also uh, take a look at the uh, sorting and ordering if i put this up here just configure this json correctly and i refresh you can also see that i, I changed the order of the two different widgets here uh, and this json is is very granular and you can change whatever you want and, and we really do feel like this is a, a good way to to set things up um to also display what it will look like in any other program this is the track uh, the tuberculosis program that we have in Serlona. and you can see here that it's basically the same thing we we display a different type of disease surveillance but everything else would be any questions? No? Okay. Uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, direct you to one more thing, and this is the other type of plugin that we currently have. Uh, that's the other programs up in this corner. Uh, I've tried to add it some some spacing here and everything, so you can see that this there's something else with this widget. And uh, as I said in the config here, we should skip this first part here, but we'll talk a bit about, more about it now. You can see that it's set up as a type plugin. And, and this box is not something that you'll see uh, by default in the capture app. Uh, you had this functionality in the old track capture, which said other programs, but the, the other programs here is going to be replaced by something much grander and bigger that's called the tracked entity dashboard, which is basically the dashboard where you can interact with all your different enrollments and everything. Um, for now though, for a, for a way to display how this plugin stuff work, we have this other programs here. And I'm, I'm in this tracked entity called Philona Rider. Uh, and this uh, tracked entity is also enrolled in all the other, or some of the other programs. I'll just... Um, yeah, sorry. Um, so 
this over here, as you probably figured out, this is a plugin. Uh, this is not a native widget that we display. It's a, it's a plugin. It's a totally different app that we're projecting in here. And all the logic is written by me, not by the Capture Core team. And you can see it, it feels and behaves like a, a regular plugin, like, uh, no, like a regular component, like all the other widgets here. It feels very native. You can also click around with the buttons. And, and this is a callback that we provide to the widget that saying that you can navigate around the app if you want to. And from here, I can sort of navigate between all the different enrollments that this Filona Rider person has. I can also click return to the dashboard. So when the dashboard is there, we'll be able to go right by, uh, back to, to the dashboard and, and look at all the other different things. And this is not something that's going to be bundled or anything. This is something that you can set up and configure in your in your own program context. Uh, yeah, so that's the two different plugins that we have. We have ones that go in form, and we have ones that go into into the into the dashboards itself, over and inside an enrollment context. And this is also configurable for all the different enrollment pages we have. So we have the enrollment uh, view, we have edits, uh, and we have a, a new. Let's see if I can. Uh, I go in here and click new. So this is a new event. And and for, for everything here as well, everything is configurable. If you want one widget to, to show up in the new and edit, but you don't want to show it up here, for example, it's totally configurable and it's, it's totally okay. Um, let's see, I'm just trying to remember if I've done everything before we move on, but I think we're, uh, I think we're there. So um, I can also just briefly show you what this actually is. Um, oh yeah, no, hold on. There's one thing that I want to show you. So all of this plugin stuff is really great. And, and we, we think that for you as an implementation, you can use this to use it for very specific things for your, for your implementation. So things would be like a civil registry lookup. Uh, it's very specific to your country and probably wouldn't work in any other country. But we also can use this plugin to extend on very generic things that would work in a certain program in a certain setting, but it, it wouldn't work across different diseases, for example. And and one of the things that I'm really going to highlight is that um, since we're we're part of the sort of the academic uh, community, we also have one group of bachelor students who are writing their bachelor thesis on this development on, and on this plugin frameworks stuff. And I, I really want to show what they've done. Um, and this is a different um, different uh, instance that we'll probably give access to at some point, uh, where they set out some metadata to basically do growth monitoring of, of a child. Uh, and from here, you can see down here that this is not something we could ever ship generically in, in the capture app. But this is the WHO growth charts or the capture growth charts, um, where we can look at how a child um, if a child has a, a normal growth throughout a different set of periods, for example. So very typical is its head uh, circumference, its length, its weight. So you can change between the different data sets and everything. And this is not something done by the core capture team. This is uh, a bachelor's group who will be releasing this for everyone to, to use, just like our custom apps. Uh, and the App Hub will have a place where we can put all these plugins and you can configure them for yourself and put it into your context. And it will really save you a lot of time and energy to, to set up all these different things when, when there's a community. That's what we're all for, right? Uh, so I was just going to show you this and this is still in the early ages of development, but this is something that will be there and, and ready to go when, when uh, probably you are ready to, to use Capture. Um, we can take a, a look at the two different um, plugin styles and how they're set up. And this is all very well documented and everything. And I'll just show you very quickly the code for it. Um, what we do is that if you set up a new app runtime uh, app, if you use the CLI and, and D2 create new app and everything and, and set up an, an app just like you would with a custom app, then you uh, from here already sort of have plugins uh, configurable. In your .d2.config, uh, you can set up a plugin entry point. And when you then run or build this app, we would release a plugin um, entry point where you can, can uh, use your plugins. Uh, and from here, you can basically do whatever you want. 
uh, you can see here that this is a, a React app that I've written. Um, this is the enrollment overview plugin. So it's the other enrollments where you can switch around. And, and please don't look at my code because it's not, it's not built for something to be sustainable, but uh, um, it's just React. It's just a React application and you can do whatever you want. And you can see that we're sending in some different types of props that you can use. So in the enrollment overview, we're sending out all the props that you can use for forgetting which context that you're in, and also a callback function for navigating around. And the same thing would be for the tracker plugin, and I'll show you the config and everything for, the, for that later because it's a bit more uh, complex, uh, but this is basically just a, a mutation function that sends in a patient ID, fetches a random user, and then you use the callbacks and everything to to send it back into the form. Uh, and we've written some uh, some TypeScript types that will all be documented as well. And you can see what you can use and everything. And if you're used to doing any sort of custom development or even React development or even any kind of JavaScript development, this will all look and feel very familiar. And it's, it's very easy to set up. And this is platform-wide. This is the platform team. It's not something that uh, we're going to take all the credit for because this is a, a very big and very great thing about the newest releases from from DHS2. Um, yeah, just need to check the time. The last thing I'll, I'll go through is the config for setting up data entry forms, uh, setting up the form field. Um, you can define it by the, either the program ID or the program stage ID. And from here, you can define how your form looks and behaves. So uh, from the program ID, it's an array. And every object in this array is one section in the form. Uh, so I'll try to show you here. So I have two sections here, one that is called civil registry and one that is called personal details. And you can see that this the name of this is civil registry. And the name of this is personal details. In the personal details, I'm just mapping out the different attributes like you would in any other form. I, I say that it's a tracked entity attribute and I give it the ID and the app will configure this and, and set it up as normal, basically. In the plugin, it's a bit more uh, complex because here you need to define some stuff, but that's pretty much it. You need to define um, an ID, you need to define the plugin source which is just a URL to your plugin and also the name and then plugin HTML. And you also need to define that it's a type plugin. And in this field map thing here, here you can define what attributes that the plugin should have access to and be allowed to change. So I've sent in the four different things that we need here, actually three different things. The, the last one is, is something else, but it's first name, last name, and gender. And from here, you can define that the ID from the app should map to whatever we call the ID in the plugin as gender. And you can see if I call uh, gender here and map it to this ID and say that it's a tracked entity attribute. If I go to the plugin details here, you can see that it, this metadata for gender is called gender up here. So you can use this in your plugin and both use this to build really specific and cool things, but also very generic things that we hope is going to benefit all of the community basically and, and everything else. So I think I've covered most parts about plugins. I'll also reiterate that this will all be well documented and it will be posted on the developer portal and, uh, and we'll make a a huge announcement uh, about it and and try to splash the water as much as we can but it will be it will be there once you're ready to to start doing this if you want to try this out and test this out i'll also set up the instance itself you'll see the the url over here that you can just upload or log into and, and try out and uh, i can probably also get renee to to post this to, to you and you can really dissect it and, and try to see how this works. But um, yeah, in general, we're just very, we're very optimistic uh, to see what you're going to build on, on this great technology. So yeah, with that, I'll, I'll give the word back to, I guess, Rene or Marcus. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure, Marcus, do you, is there anything else um that needs to be presented here or 
was this okay, the presentation? Yeah, uh, just want to say thank you to the to the guys presenting here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very proud of this. And um and uh, as you see the main headline for 41 for tracker is that we are now at parity and our focus for version 42 is to get rid of a lot of old code. And um, that is both in the backend and in the in the form of the tracker capture app. So that is version 42 in one year. Uh, um, so right now we are very proud of this. We really hope you will adapt the new endpoint. Make sure to any new projects you start now should be on the new endpoint. And uh, we also look forward to adoption of the capture app for tracker scenarios. And we look forward to see what uh, plugins there might be uh, coming from the community. Uh, there is a plan for a similar plugin uh, plugins um, hub uh, in the app hub, so that uh, plugins that is made and can use can be used in a capture app will have a place um, to be published as well. 